Now you may have noticed on the last couple of examples that there was a point where the graph split. I told you that's where the graph was being div divided by zero, where the domain doesn't exist. So we call that part of the graph a place where a vertical asymptote could live. So we saw again here that the x equals zero. That's a vertical asymptote in this particular reciprocal function, one over x. It's a place where both the lines diverge, getting closer and closer to some point. One over x squared, likewise, has a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. Now that's not always the case. In rational functions, there might be a vertical asymptote somewhere else. So for example, maybe I have some point A right there. And that's a vertical asymptote, and we'll designate it by a dashed line. And I might have a particular function that as it's approaching this value, it's not going to cross. It's just going to keep approaching it asymptotically, which means it's going to get closer and closer and closer, but never touching. In this particular case, I would say that as x, as x is approaching a from the left side, my value of x is approaching, looks like negative infinity. So we can have asymptotes or vertical asymptotes at any place along the line. So how do we identify those? Where do we find them at? How do we locate them? So let's go through a couple examples to show you how. Example, f of x equals x over x squared minus nine. How do we locate its vertical asymptotes if it has any? Well, we look at the ratio of the numerator versus the denominator and to see if there's any common factors first. So this would equal x over x plus three times x minus three. There's no common factors in the numerator and the denominator. So my vertical asymptotes are the places where the denominator becomes zero and where the holes are at. So that's at negative three and positive three. So what does that look like? For our particular graph, if we were to graph that, I know I have an issue going on over here at positive three, and I have an issue going on over here at negative three. And those are where my vertical asymptotes are at. And I'll mark those by a dashed line. That tells me my graph or my function cannot cross. The function only approaches asymptotically as we get close to that. And in this particular case, the graph would look something similar to this. It's getting closer, then it dives, So you can see that as my values of x approach negative three from the left, my value, and wait, let's, let's go ahead and do that. As my values of x approach negative three from the left, my value, my value of the function approaches negative infinity. As I get closer and closer, negative three from the left, my value dives. However, as I approach x from negative three from the right side, I know lots of stuff all over the place happening. What's my value of x doing? It's approaching positive infinity. So as I approach negative three, my value is skyrocketing. And likewise, I can play the same game over here at three. As my value of x approaches three from the left, my value is, is descending greatly, it's approaching negative infinity. As I approach x, or approach three from the right side, what's happening to my value of x? It's taking off to positive infinity. So there's one example. Another example, I have some function g of x. So we wanna find out first, are there any common factors? In order to do that, let's factor it out. I do, I do see a common factor, the x plus three. So that tells me, <laughs> excuse me, that the solution minus three is not a vertical asymptote. The only vertical asymptote I have is this one right here, because it's not sharing a common factor with the numerator. So what does that look like? Well, there's two pieces of information here, so let's figure out what they both look like. First one is I have a vertical asymptote at three. Designate that by a dashed vertical line. 
This x plus 3, it shares a common factor with the numerator, so it's not a vertical asymptote. However, the point on that graph, wherever three, negative 3 is at, it's going to have a hole in that specific spot. What do I mean by that? Well, let me try to just give you a gentle graph of what we have going on here. I know this is a vertical asymptote. So as my values, of, or as my x approaches 3 from the right, my f of x takes off from the left side as it approaches. That's what it looks like. And I have a hole right there. That just means there's a gap in the gap, graph. Because remember, my domain's not defined at uh, negative 3 and 3. At positive 3, I have a vertical asymptote. At negative 3, I have a hole. And the reason why there's a hole here and not here, this one is not a shared factor, or this one is a shared factor in my original term. The root where I got the 3, this x minus 3, that's not a shared factor. So what do you know about our, our last example here, h of x? What do you know about the denominator? Well, you realize, or I hope that you're able to realize that there are no real solutions or no real roots to that possible denominator. So when that's the case, there's no vertical asymptotes. So some rational functions do not have a vertical asymptote. Some do. This particular one doesn't.